Imagine stepping outside on a cool morning. Fog drifts low across the ground, damp grass brushing your shoes. Suddenly, the stillness breaks. A deep, thunderous boom echoes from somewhere beyond the tree line. The earth trembles under your feet. And then, movement. A shadow rises above the mist, massive, scaled, alive. Rows of teeth, longer than your hand, glint in the pale light. A tail like a wrecking ball swings once, twice, knocking down saplings like matchsticks. A dinosaur. Not in a museum. Not in a movie. Right here, right now. What if the asteroid that wiped them out 66 million years ago had missed? Would humans have learned to survive among predators bigger than buses and faster than horses? Would our cities echo with the footsteps of living thunder lizards, or would we have been wiped out before we ever invented fire? In today's episode, we're diving into the science behind one of humanity's most thrilling questions. Could humans and dinosaurs ever have shared the Earth? And what would our world look like if they still ruled today? Science fiction writers and later Hollywood screenwriters have imagined the coexistence of humans and dinosaurs in various ways. Arthur Conan Doyle, in his novel The Lost World, suggested that dinosaurs still live on an isolated plateau hidden in the South American jungles. Meanwhile, Harry Harrison, in his Eden series, created a model of the world where dinosaurs evolved into intelligent, humanoid beings, while humans only developed into a primitive society. These are all products of the imagination of science fiction writers. However, in reality, there are still many people today who believe that humans and dinosaurs lived at the same time. This is supported by a recent survey conducted in the United States. Only 25% of respondents are certain that this is not true. 27% believe it might be possible, and another 14% are convinced that our ancestors saw living dinosaurs. For the most part, these misconceptions stem from religious beliefs. The religious philosophical movement that stands in complete opposition to the theory of evolution is called creationism. In short, it encompasses all theories claiming that the earth and all living things were created by God almost instantaneously, and that this happened between 6,000 and 10,000 years ago. According to proponents of this theory, dinosaurs went extinct as a result of a global flood or some other cataclysm. Another reason for such beliefs is certain scientific discoveries that are often misinterpreted by the general public. For example, in Brazil, dinosaur footprints have been found alongside traces of ancient humans. Creationists or conspiracy theorists immediately try to use such findings as direct proof of their claims. However, in reality, the age of the footprints and drawings is vastly different. Scientists estimate that the dinosaur footprints are about 140 million years old, while the artwork created by our distant ancestors appeared near them only 3,000 to 9,000 years ago. Some scientists suggest that ancient humans incorporated discovered dinosaur footprints and bones into their beliefs and mythology. This is why drawings appeared next to footprints in Brazil. After all, a massive footprint couldn't be carried to a sacred site, so a cultic place had to be established right next to the footprint. However, in this case, it's hard to say whether the markings left by humans were mystical symbols. In North America, Native Americans clearly depicted figures of praying people next to the footprint of a bipedal theropod dinosaur. Early Europeans mistook such footprints for the tracks of a raven sent by Noah to find dry land. This confusion arose because theropod footprints closely resemble those of bird feet. 
In ancient China, they were even thought to be the tracks of the phoenix, believed to bless the land. Perhaps the people of South America who left mysterious signs next to a dinosaur footprint thought something similar. Some scientists proposed that these could be solar symbols related to the sun. However, we will likely never know what our ancestors were thinking when they left these marks next to a massive footprint. What we can say with certainty is that the dinosaur footprint and the petroglyphs beside it were created at different times. The footprint was left in wet clay, while the drawings were carved into hardened rock millions of years later. Occasionally, even in scientific circles, there are speculations that some reptiles survive the mass extinction at the boundary of the Cretaceous and Paleogene periods. These survivors are thought to have inspired dragon myths and legends in nearly every culture worldwide. We've discussed this possibility in our videos before. However, modern science provides a clear answer. This is simply impossible. Yes, some living organisms that existed alongside dinosaurs have survived to the present day. Turtles, crocodiles, and sharks were witnesses to the dinosaur era. Of course, over the intervening time, they have changed significantly. However, no living fossil larger than a frog have been identified by science in the last 100 to 150 years. It's possible that deep in the oceans, there are worms or microorganisms that look the same as they did during the reign of the dinosaurs. But the likelihood that ancient Chinese people saw a petrosaur soaring in the sky and mistook it for a dragon is vanishingly small and lacks any evidence. Neither archaeology nor the analysis of written or visual sources supports such claims. Of course, descriptions of mythological creatures like Garuda could be mistaken for accounts of dinosaurs. By the same logic, these could also be interpreted as descriptions of spaceships. Some people find similar evidence in the Bible or other sacred texts. But until these speculations are backed by more scientific methods, we will consider the possibility of humans encountering dinosaurs as merely the product of science fiction writers' imaginations. There is a theory that findings like the bones of extinct animals or dinosaur footprints were simply integrated into the existing mythologies of various cultures. Stories about dragons, giants, and other monsters existed independently of living dinosaurs in nature. The discovery of giant bones, teeth, and footprints only reinforced these myths. It's worth mentioning that, once again, technically, dinosaurs are still living among us. Birds are officially classified as theropods, a group of Cerisian dinosaurs. They are the closest relatives of oviraptors and dromaeosaurs. In other words, the ancestors of modern birds were dinosaurs that survived extinction and evolved into domestic chickens, city pigeons, beautiful hummingbirds, predatory eagles and hawks, and many other species. So, the next time you're feeding pigeons in the park or cooking chicken legs for dinner, remember that humans have managed to tame even dinosaurs. We eat their meat, keep them in cages, hunt them, and at the same time strive to preserve these very real dinosaurs in the wild. Despite all the evidence against the simultaneous existence of humans and dinosaurs, this topic is regularly revisited in both science and fiction. There are even several theories about what such a society might look like. We'll leave the musings of writers and screenwriters for the next episode. For now, let's explore the scientific perspective on this issue. First, we need to make a few caveats and assumptions. In constructing our model of evolution, we won't consider the hypothesis that the extinction of dinosaurs was influenced by the rise of mammals and the appearance of flowering plants. After all, we need not only for dinosaurs to survive, but also for Mesozoic mammals to evolve into modern humans. Imagining what the modern world would be like without flowering plants is even more challenging. So, to understand how humans might coexist with dinosaurs, let's simply assume that 66 million years ago, 
A massive asteroid missed our planet and volcanic activity didn't cause significant climate changes. Scientists still haven't determined whether all dinosaurs were warm-blooded. However, it seems that only the ancestors of modern birds had this trait. If so, cold regions like Siberia or Alaska would have been inaccessible to most dinosaurs. In these areas, mammals would have reigned supreme. In warmer climates, particularly on vast, grassy plains, mammals would have had little chance to thrive. African savannas, North American prairies, and Central Asian steppes would be populated by diverse horned, armored, and duck-billed dinosaurs. It's unlikely that horses, bison, antelopes, or large hoofed animals would have emerged in such conditions. Like at the dawn of their evolution, they would remain small forest creatures. Large predators like lions and bears would also likely struggle to compete. Their ecological niches would be occupied by bipedal theropods. However, in the smaller weight class, mammals would likely prevail. Small dinosaurs would lose the survival battle to more advanced and adaptable competitors. Meanwhile, large dinosaurs could grow even larger. We must also remember that, along with dinosaurs, many species of birds and early placental mammals went extinct. If the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction hadn't occurred, these species would have continued their evolutionary paths. It's likely that we would see a great number of relict animals, similar to the egg-laying mammals found in Australia. Another possibility is the parallel development of dinosaur and mammal faunas on different continents after their separation. In reality, this happened with Australia. Due to its isolation from the rest of the world, its fauna evolved in a unique way. There's even a chance that two separate civilizations could have emerged independently, modern humans and intelligent dinosaur descendants. This assumption forms the basis of Harry Harrison's Eden series, mentioned earlier. This famous science fiction writer proposed that dinosaurs, having appeared earlier, would reach a higher technological level, while humans would only master Stone Age technologies. However, at the time of writing, the author was unaware of the warm-blooded nature of some dinosaurs. Thus, cold climates became humanity's salvation from complete destruction. In Harrison's world, dinosaur descendants became masters of biotechnology. Their weapons were snakes that fired venomous projectiles, and they sailed the oceans on ships grown from marine reptiles like pleosaurs. Yet, humans successfully resisted their more advanced rivals thanks to their intelligence and adaptability. How do scientists view the possibility of an intelligent dinosaur civilization? We all know that real dinosaurs weren't particularly intelligent. The size of their brains relative to their body mass was tiny. However, their evolution didn't stand still. By the end of the dinosaur era, some species were already warm-blooded. Others had transitioned to sexual reproduction. The most advanced predatory dinosaurs had multiple types of teeth designed for different tasks. There's even a well-founded theory that diverse teeth indicate high intelligence in animals. Therefore, we cannot entirely rule out the possibility of intelligent dinosaurs emerging if they hadn't gone extinct 66 million years ago. Some scientists suggest that they could have become more humanoid in appearance, as the most advanced dinosaurs had already mastered bipedal walking. They also had forelimbs with hands, which humans inherited from a shared ancestor through many generations. It's possible that the hands of these dinosaur humans would be more developed and stronger than ours. Their skin would likely be thicker and scalier, and they might periodically shed it, not just a result of a sunburn. If our ancestors were dinosaurs, we would likely be more sensitive to temperature changes and have sharper vision and sense of smell. These ancestors wouldn't be the largest dinosaurs, but rather the smartest ones. 
Considering that even these could stand between 5 and 15 feet tall, the average height of modern humans might be much greater. Another question is how such a society of dinosaur humans would develop. Since they weren't particularly large or strong, claws and teeth would eventually be replaced by sticks and stones, followed by more advanced weapons and tools. However, this process would likely be slower than it was for primates. The mastery of fire would also happen much later than it did for our real ancestors. The subsequent formation of groups, clans, tribes, and nations would naturally follow, as cooperation is essential for surviving large predators and other dangers. Society would likely develop along a similar path to ours. We can't say whether such beings would be smarter or more advanced than us, but their medicine, science, economy, and other societal institutions would undoubtedly develop differently from our own. Another important topic in these discussions is whether humans would have had a chance to emerge and develop if dinosaurs hadn't gone extinct. Early primates did exist during the time of the last dinosaurs, but they bore little resemblance to humans or modern apes. They were closer to rodents. On the other hand, the climactic changes that forced our ancestors to descend from trees and adopt bipedal walking could have promoted these primates to do the same. Our real ancestors survived in the presence of large predators like lions and leopards. If they had to escape from dinosaurs or raptors instead, the situation wouldn't have been drastically different. Ultimately, human evolution didn't develop solely on the extinction or survival of dinosaurs and other Mesozoic animals. It required a stroke of luck. The conditions that led to the emergence of the first humanoid creatures in Africa a few million years ago were specific. In South America, for example, ancient primates only evolved into other types of monkeys, and in North America, primates migrated at least three times, all unsuccessfully. As history shows, there's no room for what-ifs. Humans and dinosaurs never crossed paths on their long evolutionary journeys. The world developed along its singular path, and we can only speculate about how these two vastly different types of creatures would have coexisted if the dinosaur era hadn't ended. The creator of the Age of Dinosaurs channel thank our viewers who watch our episodes to the very end. To learn more about the lives of real dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals, check out our previous videos. They also cover the history of their discovery and study, human evolution, and modern ecological issues.